Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I want to talk to you about uh, the new update to Capture One. So Capture One 21.1 was just released today and it is a dot update but they've actually included a couple of new features and I'm going to talk about them now. So the first thing um, is they have improved the import window. So I'm sure this will probably be a inverted commas finally for many people but Capture One will now finally let you see a full image in the import viewer. So what do I mean by this? Let me show you. So if I hit on import, so I have a memory card loaded here and as you can see I've got my thumbnails um, and previously this was the largest you could see an image. So you could scroll your thumbnails but you could never actually see it full size. Well now they fixed that finally. Um, so if you double click on an image now uh, you get this full size viewer um, and what it's doing is is using uh, embedded previews to give you a large image um, and you can now quickly scroll through your images and select the ones you want to import. So uh, to switch in and out of this you just hit the G key um, and there's also a little button up here on the top of the import window so that we can slick, select as well. Um, and in case you missed it, they did some changes in Capture One 21.0 uh, as well. So um, they've now added some keyboard shortcuts to this window so that you can quickly toggle your import picks on and off. So if you use the spacebar, you can toggle your images on and off as to which one you want to import. Um, if you want to quickly deselect all of them, because when you open the window, they're all selected by default, you just use this little button down the bottom here that says pick all, just uncheck that. And now they will all be unchecked so you can with your hand on the keyboard just quickly go through by using the arrow keys and for ones you want to import just hit the space bar and so on and then when you're finished just import your images okay so that is the first feature and the second is a bit more substantial it's a new feature called style brushes so what are style brushes style brushes is a new way to work with brushes and layers um, and Basically, uh, they're a way to create a layer with parameters already set and also to load uh, a brush settings at the same time. So if that sounds a bit vague, <laughs> I think the best thing for me to do is to kind of give you a quick demonstration and then you'll see what, what uh, I mean by it. Basically, it actually condenses what would have been um, several steps into a single click. And to give you an example, uh, let's look at this image here and say, for example, I wanted to darken down the sky. So let me first show you the way I previously would have done this. Um, I would have started by creating a new adjustment layer and then I would work on, say, bring down the exposure maybe just a little bit and maybe the contrast or whatever. Uh, something like that. And then I would invert the mask okay you could just directly paint the mask on first as well but i like to see the adjustments before i actually um paint it in uh okay and then i would just paint in the mask wherever i want it oh i'd have to set my brush settings first so with the flow and then we could just paint on where we want to darken our sky okay so as you can see that's like four or five steps to do that so let me just start again so now I can do all that in one go with the new style brushes. So if I go in here, um, you'll see there's two uh, options. We have custom style brushes. So these are ones you can create yourself. And then built-in style brushes are ones that come with the software. So if I look down here, we see there's several categories. And I want to go with burn for darken. And as soon as I start brushing, you will see... It's doing everything I did in the previous steps all in one go. And there we have it. So basically what this does is when I select a brush um, and as soon as I start brushing, it'll create a layer and with settings on it. In this case, it's just an uh, exposure setting, but you can actually customize this to whatever we want. Um, and also it loads brush settings as well. So in this case, you can see they have opacity set full and we have a soft brush, so the hardness is set to zero and we have flow quite low. So with flow quite low, you, you could just keep brushing back and forward over something to build it up. So let me give you another example. 
Um, let's switch to another image here. Let me just go back to the hand tool. So you can actually you can use um, multiple style brushes on a, a, a on an image, and let me show you how they behave because it's quite interesting as well. Um, so in this example, say I want to brighten up the interior here and I want to darken the sky. So we'll start with uh, shadow recover. So this will set up a new layer with shadow recovery on it and load the brush settings. Okay, so I'm just going to brush in here and here and maybe a bit here. And we will bring up a little bit of the background as well, see what's going on in here. Okay, so when you do this, you notice it's created a layer called Shadows Recover, which is the same name as the style brush. So now when I create a second one, so all again, I'll do is click on burn darken and as soon as I start brushing you see it's created another new layer and also you'll see the brush settings have changed slightly so when you create a new layer with a style brush uh, the brush settings are linked to that layer so if I click back on shadows recover you see the brush has changed so now the brushes are actually linked to that layer and also, if I go back here, you, if you keep an eye on the style brushes panel, when I switch between these, you can see it's changing the brush as well. So because Capture One is limited to 15 layers, you can have up to 15 different style brushes on an image. Um, and you can, of course, create your own as well. So to create your own, let me give you one more example. So I'm going to pop over here. So a little while ago, I did a tutorial on how to do skin softening in Capture One and it basically involved setting up a new layer with a few different adjustments and uh, brushing it on. Now, it was a little convoluted because you would have, every time you would have to either set up a new layer and load those adjustments from a preset or a style and then set up your masks and so on. Um, so again, let me quickly show you the old way of doing it. So I would have created a new layer. In this case, I'm just gonna create an empty adjustment layer and then I have to go find the uh, adjustments because there was quite a few. So I had them saved as a style. So I'd have to go apply adjustments from custom styles. And then where's my style gone? It's here somewhere. Ah, skin soften. Okay, so that load. And now I can start brushing them on. And so on. Um, and now I can actually save these as a style brush. So to save a style brush, first of all, you want to create your new adjustment layer uh, as we've done set all your settings again you can see i have settings set here and then you want to change your brush settings so in this case i'm going to create a nice softish brush and we'll keep the flow fairly low again so we can do this method of building it up slowly and then all i do is go up to my style brushes panel and i've done this already but we'll do it again <laughs> save style brush Okay, and this lets you, gives you the option of uh, setting which settings you want to save in the style brush. And hit save. And then we'll give it a name, in this case skin soften, I've done so already. So now, to apply this in the future, all I have to do is hit skin soften. And I can brush it straight on. So there we have it. That is the new style brushes in Capture 121. So uh, what else is new in this version? Um, there's a couple of m other minor new things. Um, the maximum viewer resolution, or viewer zoom has increased. So previously it was 400%, but you can now go all the way to 1600%. Now you're probably saying to yourself, why would I want to do that? But if you have one of the new very high resolution displays, like say for example, the 6K Apple display, or uh, even some of the 8K displays are out, 400% um, probably might not be good enough of a zoom for you, depending on what you need to do, if you need very fine brushing or something. Um, so they have enabled it to go up to 1600%. And I guess they're kind of future proofing things a bit with that as well. Um, they've also changed the keystone lines. Um, let me see if we can demonstrate this so if you're using keystone correction so keystone vertical for example you can see the lines are now much much more visible and uh, before they were kind of faded and dotted so this just makes it a bit easier to set your keystoning 
and I'm afraid no they have not added auto keystone correction yet um, unfortunately uh, what else um, they've added more pro standard raw profiles um, and I think the list is on the release notes somewhere um, if I have a link to it by the time I'm publishing this I will post it in the um, description below and then new camera support including support for the Fuji GFX 100S the Fuji XE4 and the Sony A1 okay so that is pretty much it I hope you have found this video useful if you do please like share and subscribe and check out the rest of my Capture One videos um, in my Capture One playlist and again link will be in the description below and uh, don't forget to check out my blog as well and I'll have a written version of this and again link for that will be in the description below okay so thanks for watching and see you next time